there you go, Ricky Rudd in row six, followed by Tommy Ellis, row number seven, Phil Parsons and Rusty Wallace, row number eight. There'll be, of course, 40 cars starting this race. Morgan Shepard getting one of his infrequent Grand National rides, followed by Buddy Baker, Jeff Bodine, Lake Speed. The 10th row, Ron Bouchard, Bobby Hillen Jr. 11th row, Neil Bonnet, Cale Yarborough, row number 12. Bobby Allison and Richard Petty. The 13th row, Kyle Petty and the legendary A.J. Foyt. Row number 14, Dave Marcus and Tommy Houston out of the late model sportsman ranks. The 15th row, Poncho Carter and Trevor Boys. Row number 16. H.B. Bailey and Ken Trader. The green flag has anticipated this pass by by the front stretch. The 1985 Southern 500 is underway. The entire field of 40 cars passes under Harold Kinder around turn one and turn two. No incidents at this point of the race. This is a treacherous racetrack. And as we've become accustomed to see, the red and white number nine of Bill Elliott is the leader. That is Benny Parsons, our broadcasting colleague right now, running in second position. Four hundred and ninety-seven and a half miles to go, Jack. Larry, there's the guy that's going for the million dollars, and he's broken from the point to lead this event by several car lengths over Benny Parsons, who drives in a Chevrolet. There you see the separation as they enter turn three, but look out for number three. Dale Earnhardt is on the move. He broke on the start, and he's going down low, trying to challenge on Benny Parsons as they come across the stripe. Now, remember the significance of this racetrack. Not only is it famous because it was the first of the super speedways constructed way back in 1950, but the myth and the legend of how treacherous this place can be is no myth. This is a racetrack that can jump up and bite you at any time. Look at, at Earnhardt. second of the day, and Earnhardt moves underneath Benny. Earnhardt took a move down on the inside, a very calculated one as they were going into turn three, and to make sure he got by sufficiently to give Parsons enough groove to get back in racing speed. But it's Earnhardt moving to second, dropping Parsons back to third. And here's a move on the inside by Tim Richmond as they came across the stripe for a back marker. Tim Richmond, a guy who was set on the pole here, was in sixth position after the last lap, and right now he's trying to find a way around Darrell Waltrip, the man who has won so many races, including yesterday in NASCAR racing in the past decade. What do you think, Larry? So far, things have gone pretty much as we had expected, with Earnhardt making a move to the front, Elliott dominating at least the first three laps. But it's going to be a shuffle for those other positions, and they round out a turn four. You see the top three, and there's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth position doing battle. The first interesting moment will come if and when, and it looks like it might happen, Earnhardt catches Bill Elliott. With all this distance to go in this race, will Bill Elliott simply move over and let Dale get by? As we saw last week, when Dale Earnhardt wants to lead, he'll go to any lengths to get it at any time. But you got to remember, this is Darlington, and what a great shot from inside of Benny Parsons' car in third position. There you see him trailing Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt looks to me to be maybe just a tad loose as he comes out of the corners. There's the shot down the front straightaway. See how quick the stripes go by you? A lot of high speed, and then you got to go into that narrow corner and turn one and really just hold on. Benny Parsons between he and the leader, Cale Yarbrough. This battle is going to go right down to the wire. Cale Yarbrough, who dropped out of the Michigan race after winning at Talladega. And we've got a spin and turn number two. It's Earnhardt. And right in front of Elliott, and Elliott misses him. Boy, that was close. Bill Elliott almost saw the $1 million go away on the backstretch. Wow. Whoa. Yellow flag will come out. Earnhardt with damage to the front end. It finally caught up with him, and this will move Bill Elliott right to the back bumper of Cale Yarborough. Is this the chance that he's been waiting for? Let's take a look at this. Dale Earnhardt very loose in the corner. You can see it begin to break traction. It starts to come around at him. He just doesn't have the opportunity to get it straightened back up. He's got full lock on the brakes. Does one 360. He still hasn't let loose of the brakes. There he does now. He's clipped the wall, however, locks him back up again. Wow! Uh -oh. Boy, Elliott came close. Well, Yarborough sideways off of turn number four. Elliott is right on his back bumper. There is Jeff Bodine in the white and yellow number five. Bodine running fourth position in the race. Heavy-duty smoke coming out. Looked like from Bodine that time, but that definitely looked like tires. But boy, here's the contest up front for the front position in the 36th annual Southern 500. Yarborough trying to play the rat. 
seven. Bill Elliott playing the hound. He's got a million dollars up for grabs and one guy from nearby Sardis. And oh no, an engine. It looks like it's gone away on Cale Yarbrough. And look at Elliott go down on the apron trying to get around. Bill Elliott with some very anxious moments. Fortunately for him, the entire field behind him senses the situation and let him go. Bill Elliott once again averts disaster by mere inches and just fractions of a second. And some heads up driving. Listen to the crowd. The crowd is sensing history. Could be made here this afternoon at the Darlington International Raceway as the race just been handed to Bill Elliott. Let's take a look at this replay. You want to talk about some heads up driving. Cale Yarbrough beginning to accelerate, pulling around Bill Elliott. And there it goes. The telltale plumes of smoke. But watch Elliott. Look at Elliott. Now what he's still looking for some beautiful driving. Here goes to feel like anvil because he knows he's got only less than two laps to go to victory lane. Bill Elliott, the man from Georgia, the man that nobody saw coming five, six years ago. They begin to see some sparks two years ago and last year you could see that the embers were there for a great, great NASCAR career. The white flag is coming up this time around. You can see the fans urging him on. Bill Elliott has just 1.366 miles to go. Elliott around turn number one. There is Bernie Elliott, the man who makes all the decisions down in the pit area. Elliott is out of turn number two. He's down the backstretch. Bill Elliott at this historic old race plan is running in the tire tracks of people like Johnny Mance, who won the first race back in 1950 here. Bonnie Flop, Buck Baker. Bill Elliott is racing into the record books. Bill Elliott is going toward immortality. Bill Elliott gets the checkered flag. Bill Elliott has won an additional $1 million in 1985. In auto racing history, Bill Elliott has won a bonus of $1 million. He's well on the road to winning an additional $1 million in race winnings alone. If he wins the points championship, that's another $275,000. What a big moment. Dick Bergen is down in the pit area right now. Ernie, it was a, a wonderful moment. How do you feel? Well, the first thing I got to do is thank the Lord. I mean, it, we weren't the best car here today, but... I tell you, he really looked out for us, and he's looked out for us all year long. You know, I can't say much else than that. Other than, you know, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Coors, and you know, our car owner, Harry Melling, and you know, my wife and family that stuck behind me, you know, for so long. And, uh, you know, it's just a dream come true. Okay, Ernie's on his way to Victory Lane to collect $1 million. And we can guarantee you that this will be a victory lane celebration like you have never seen before.